Mathematics is a subject which we teach here in 7th semester of Diploma Electronics to our Polytechnic students. Here we will be discussing about chapter 1 as Digital Modulation. In your previous semester, you had a subject called as Principle of Communication. There your teacher must have taught you about modulation. Can anyone from your side define modulation for me? A process of modifying one parameter of carrier wave in accordance to information. Correct. The modulation is a technique in which any one parameter of a carrier wave is varied in accordance with the information. Now the another question comes in my mind is why should we go for a modulation? Why we cannot transmit signal as it is? Why the modulation is needed? Again explanation expected from your side. When we wish to communicate with large geographic area with visible antenna. Very correct. The modulation process is required whenever uh, the speaker wanted to address through a longer distance, a larger distance he wanted to achieve. So with the help of modulation, he can transfer his low power signal on a high power carrier. So two things you said are important in modulation. One is a carrier, another one is a message signal, the information which you want to transmit. The carrier could be analog, could be sinusoidal, could be digital pulses. Whereas the information similarly can be either a analog or a digital. So any one parameter of a carrier is varied in accordance with a message and then it has been transmitted over a channel. The channel could be of a analog, the channel could be a digital channel. In this equation, you can observe there are two things, one as an amplitude, another one as a phase, that is angle. You all are very well aware about this. The part AC is an amplitude and the part which is in the bracket after cosine, that is 2 pi ft plus phi is a angle. Angle, very good. This is carrier and we said that any one part of a carrier waveform is varied. So which part it could be? It could be amplitude, it could be frequency or it could be phase. This is how you classify the modulation techniques. If you are varying amplitude, you refer it as amplitude modulation. And if you vary angle, then it will be angle modulation. The angle modulation has two parts in it. Which those two parts? One has a frequency, another one has a phase. So it will be frequency modulation or it could be phase modulation. We are having two types of it, either a amplitude modulation or a angular modulation. The angular modulation has frequency modulation and phase modulation. Now at the beginning we said that carrier could be either analog or pulses. If the carrier is analog that is a continuous wave then it comes under continuous wave modulation and if the carrier is pulses then it will be digital modulation or pulse digital modulation. The pulse digital modulation can further be classified as digital modulation and analog modulation. Now from where this classification has come? Now when we talking about carrier we said that carrier could be either analog or, or digital and now we are talking about digital carrier wave. So similar way the information could be either analog or digital. If the information is analog, then it will be analog modulation. Analog modulation. And if it is digital, then it will be digital modulation. The another name which we give, which we have given to digital modulation is pulse code modulation. And for analog modulation, three types are there. Pulse, amplitude modulation, where? Yes, correct. Amplitude is varied. Pulse duration modulation, where the Duration of pulse is varied and last one is pulse position modulation where the position of the pulse get varied whereas its time period and 
frequency remains constant. Now let's move on to the learning of a subject. First is objectives. These are the things which you should know after learning the subject or learning this session. The first one is you should be aware about the principle of digital modulation. Means you should be able to define principle digital modulation. Then the next part is see there you have learned earlier analog modulation now you are talking about digital modulation so you should know the factors that influence choice of a digital modulation over the analog modulations then why should you go for a digital modulation you should be aware about it so that is the second objective of ours the next objective is ASK principle now afterwards when we go in deep inside a digital modulation, the first type which comes in front of us is amplitude shift keying that we call it as ASK. So you should be aware about its principle or rather you will be able to define ASK. You should know the block diagram and circuit diagram of ASK and you should be able to explain that block diagram which includes modulator and demodulator many people try to classify modulation techniques as you seen in our previous slide there was one classification uh, according to digital pulses as a carrier and uh, analog as a carrier now this is one another classification here we are considering both the information as well as the carrier waveform now here in the first type you can see that which we referred as analog modulation we are saying here the information as well as the carrier will be analog okay the analog and analog so which type of modulation you learn your, in your previous semester fm am and pm correct amplitude modulation phase modulation and frequency modulations so these all are the types of analog modulations which you learn in your previous semester now what if we have information as a digital and carrier as a analog so that comes under digital modulation which our current syllabus content is that itself here in our current syllabus we are supposed to learn about digital modulation where we will be talking about digital information over a analog carrier so digital information over a analog channel so this is the principle of digital modulation next one is pulse modulation where we will be having analog signal and the pulses will be digital so we call it as pulse modulations this we also cover in our syllabus and the last one is digital baseband modulation some people even refer it as line coding what happened in line coding we will be having both the signals that is information as analog oh sorry digital and the carrier will also be digital got it so analog signal analog channel analog modulation digital information analog channel digital modulation analog signal digital channel pulse modulation and both digital information as well as carrier will be digital baseband modulation now let us move to the next topic analog modulation versus digital modulation why do we why should we prefer analog modulation over digital modulation the analog modulation has two advantages less bandwidth and more accuracy the accuracy in digital modulation hampers because of quantization error but when we talk about advantages of digital modulations there are many as you know that thing we will be using here two levels high level and low level to represent zero and one it has high noise immunity the error correction capability is possible here in digital modulation we can easily add a bit or a series of bits as error correction bits or error detection bits the data transmitted here is in digital form and hence it can be encrypted easily and provides security multiple types of signal conditioning can also be implemented here in digital modulations time division multiplexing code division multiplexing frequency division multiplexing 
and wavelength division multiplexing can be easily implemented in digital modulation. The digital modulations provide high speed transmission. Now let us move on to the factors that influences us for the choice of digital modulation. In adverse conditions like interference environment, fading conditions and multipath situations, the digital modulation performs well. The recent development in modulation techniques made digital modulation to occupy a minimum bandwidth. It is very cost effective and easy to implement. The receiver subscribers are very co less complex and cost effective. The modulation which is simple to detect is more attractive. Following are the factors which we use to measure the performance of a digital modulation scheme. They are power efficiency, bandwidth efficiency, power spectral density and system complexity. Let us explore them one by one. The term is of power efficiency. It is ability of a modulation technique to preserve the bit error probability of a digital message at low power levels. The power efficiency is measured at input of a receiver for certain bit error probability. Let us define power efficiency. It is a ratio. The ratio of signal energy per bit to the noise power spectral density. In digital modulation systems, in order to increase the noise immunity, it is very much necessary to increase the signal power. So there is a trade off between the signal power and the bit error probability. Now let us move on to the next factor that influences the choice of modulation system and a very important factor indeed bandwidth efficiency. Higher the bandwidth efficiency more data can be transmitted in a given spectrum allocation. The bandwidth efficiency describes the ability of a modulation system to accommodate data within a limited bandwidth. Now let us move on to the next topic that is system complexity. The system complexity plays a very important role because it decides the cost of a modulation scheme. Usually the demodulators are more complex than the modulators. Why the demodulators are more complex? Generally we can't say all the demodulators are concept, co complex. The demodulators can be classified as either coherent demodulator or a non-coherent demodulator. So we will say that coherent demodulator are those which requires carrier oscillator at the receiver end whereas non-coherent modulators can detect the information can reconstruct the information without the help of a carrier oscillator. So coherent demodulators are more complex than the non-coherent demodulators. Now here we have considered three parts, one as power efficiency, another one as bandwidth efficiency and the third one as system complexity. These are the main criteria that decides that will help us in choosing a modulation technique. Here we have listed four types of modulation schemes, analog modulation, digital modulation, pulse modulation and baseband modulation. The digital modulation technique which we are going to learn here as information in the form of pulses, digital information, whereas we use here carrier as analog. In digital modulation technique, the information could be either a simple binary data or it could be an encoded version of the binary data, M array encoded version of a binary data. Different shift keying methods are used in digital modulation technique. ASK amplitude shift keying. In amplitude shift keying, the amplitude of a carrier, analog carrier is varied in accordance with the digital information. The second one is frequency shift keying. In frequency shift keying, we are using two carriers and the frequency of a carrier is decided depending on the digital information. Whereas in phase shift keying, we will be using two phases of a same carrier 
So one phrase will use to represent zero and another one will use to represent one. Now let us move on to the new section. We have seen that uh, there are three types of techniques. The ASK. In ASK modulation, for one, for zero we are representing by one amplitude, and for one we are using the another amplitude. So here in here you can observe that for ASK. Similarly, for PSK we are using two different phases for zero and for one. Now the third type in for FSK we are using two carrier waves and for zero one wave will be one frequency will be selected and whereas for one the another frequency will be selected. Now let us move on to the next topic hierarchy of digital modulation techniques. The digital modulation technique basically classified according to the amplitude either as constant envelope, fixed amplitude or a non-constant envelope, variable amplitude. In constant envelope we got two types frequency shift keying and phase shift keying. The frequency shift keying has binary FSK, MRA FSK and GMSK. The binary FSK uses two frequencies whereas MRA FSK uses n frequencies. Similarly the phase shift keying is classified as binary PSK. Differential PSK, MRA PSK, Q quadrature PSK and 8 PSK. The non-constant envelope has two types amplitude shift keying and quadrature amplitude modulation. In amplitude shift keying we have on a on a, off keying OOK MRA OSK. In MRA QAM we got rectangular and circular QAM. To the next topic amplitude shift keying. Here you can see in the diagram there are two things one is a modulator another one is a demodulator the modulator has here just as a switch any switch any electronic switch like a uh, transistor can be used here as modulator the input to the switch is a carrier wave and the on off position of a switch is controlled by information by digital information so if you are using switch here as a transistor then the collector sh should be connected to the carrier wave whereas the base is to be connected at a information and the output can be taken from a emitter side. So here sorry when the input is zero the switch will be off and no carrier wave will appear at the output. When the input is one the switch will be connected and hence the carrier is available at the output. So the type of ASK we are seeing here is on off keying OOK. So for symbol 0 no output and for symbol 1 carrier appears at the output. Demodulator has two blocks one as of a rectifier and another one as a low pass filter. So we will be able to easily reconstruct the information with the help of rectifier and a low pass filter. The amplitude is uh, highly susceptible to noise. Here as you can see that it get easily distorted. In ASK we use two binary values to represent the amplitude. So the modulated signal for one bit time is susceptible to noise. It, this is inefficient modulation technique and it is used for voice grade line up to 1200 bits per second and it is very high speed over optical fiber. Now here the diagram represent amplitude shift gain. In this video you can see that the input is analog, uh, digital and the carrier is analog and we are using here two amplitudes to represent data 0 and data 1. One amplitude is used for data 1, another one is used to represent data 0. Now, now the baud rate and bit rate. So what is bit rate and what is baud rate? Many people are confused in this term. The bit rate is defined as number of data bits per second and whereas the baud rate is number of symbols per second. In ASK, the number of bits and number of 
symbols are similar are same one bit is used to represent one symbol and hence the baud rate and bit rate are same whereas in case of qpsk more number of data bits are used to represent symbols sk so here the data bits and the baud rate and bit rate is same now let us move on to bandwidth the bandwidth is defined as difference between two frequencies higher or maximum frequency and lower or the minimum frequencies the bandwidth is generally represented side by side to the center frequency the higher frequency is on the right side and the lower frequency is on the left side here in esk the maximum frequency is fc plus half of the baud whereas the minimum frequency is fc minus half of the baud so whenever we wanted to calculate the bandwidth we have to subtract these two frequencies maximum frequency or higher frequency from the lower or minimum frequencies so this gives out to be the value as n baud now let us summarize we have seen here principle of digital modulation as per that principle the digital information either the amplitude frequency or phase of an analog carrier is varied in according with the digital information the next thing we saw here factors that influences choice of digital modulation over analog modulation there we have seen bandwidth efficiency power efficiency and complexity of a system we have seen principle of operation of ask as per that principle the amplitude of a analog carrier is varied in accordance with a digital information so ask is of two types in ok one amplitude as high another amplitude as zero null amplitude in ask we are used two amplitudes now move on to the questions mcqs if the bit rate of an ask signal is 1200 bits per second what will be the baud rate correct 1200 the bit rate and baud rate for ask signal are same because one number of bit is used to represent one symbol so symbol and data bits are same now we should move on to the next question dash conversion is the process of changing one of parameter of analog carrier over the digital informations one parameter of analog carrier changes according to digital information and that happens in digital to analog converter very correct so d to a conversion is a process any one parameter of analog carrier is changed according to the digital informations now next next question in dash the amplitude of an analog carrier is changed with reference to digital information and the frequency phase remains constant the amplitude of analog carrier changes with reference to digital information and frequency phase remains constant in which type of modulation it happens correct it happens in amplitude shift keying ask the amplitude changes frequency and phase remains same for a carrier frequency analog carrier frequencies okay then now just we have to move on to the next question so next question is dash number of carrier frequencies used in binary ask in binary ask how many number of frequency carrier frequency we use correct one frequency because it is amplitude shift keying the amplitude is varied frequency and phase remain constant move it on to the next category where we will ask you short answered questions so the question number 1 in this case define digital modulation with help of block diagram move on to the next question define amplitude shift keying ask with help of waveforms next in the row compare analog and digital modulation with respect to few parameters so next question in the row write down the six factors that strongly suggest preference of digital modulation over analog modulations six factors that strongly suggest preference of digital modulation over an analog modulation draw the diagram showing hierarchy of digital modulation the diagram that depicts hierarchy of digital modulation 
define power efficiency and bandwidth efficiency of communication channel with equation define power efficiency and bandwidth efficiency of a communication channel with equation last question structured as a question explain the block diagram of amplitude shift keying modulator and write down its advantages and disadvantages